here again at the Say What You Like podcast. This is Eric Hernandez along with my partner, Philip Enriquez. And we're going to talk some Cowboys. After a 27-17 win in Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys continue their historic streak. But the question that seems to be a shadow over this great season is, are the Dallas Cowboys still an accident waiting to happen? Look, as a Dallas Cowboys fan, it pains me that every week I have to look at Stephen A. Smith on first take. And every week we, we put up an impressive win is every week he gives the audience an excuse. And, and he goes back to that famous line, they're an accident waiting to happen. Yes. Okay. Do you, I got. I got to ask you. Do you still feel that they're an accident waiting to happen as a non-Cowboys fan? Before I get into my rant on it. Well, as a Cowboys pure hater, I hope they are. But I mean, on the field, no. I can't say that I expect a giant interception. I don't expect this great fumble. I don't expect to see it on the field. Okay. So it's more like you're hoping for it, but it's starting to look more and more like it's harder to see. Well, the accident, I think, is going to happen in the press box, in the owner's box. Yeah, a lot of people hoping for that. Yeah. But let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Do you know what the 2016 Dallas Cowboys have in common with the microwave, penicillin, and the pacemaker? I have no idea where you're going with this one. They are all accidents. Those things were discovered and made by accident. Just like these 2016 9-1 Dallas Cowboys, we were made by accident. And here's my proof. Back in the 2015 season, Des Bryant breaks his foot in week one. The accident happened. Yep. The next week, in week two, Tony Romo breaks his collarbone. The accident was waiting to happen. Then he returns later on in Thanksgiving and after winning the previous week, Tony Romo re-injures that same collarbone against the Panthers. The accident was waiting to happen. Then, fast forward to the 2016 NFL Draft. The draft experts criticize the Cowboys' selection of Ezekiel Elliott over the player who they called the best player in the draft, Jalen Ramsey. The accident was waiting to happen. Then later on in that first round, Jerry Jones fails to trade up for the star quarterback prospect Paxton Lynch as he was outbidden by John Elway and the Denver Broncos. The accident was waiting to happen, and it happened. Then, August 2nd, in Oxnard, California, in training camp, the presumptive backup quarterback, Callan Moore, breaks his leg. I forgot about that. <laughs> the accident was waiting to happen. Then guess what? A few weeks later, later that month, in the dress rehearsal game, Tony Romo breaks a bone in his back, and he's out for six to ten weeks. It was an accident waiting to happen. And yeah. here we are. After all that, the accident has happened. Stephen A. Smith is exactly right. The accident has happened. And through all of that, this team has proven resilient and tough. And through those accidents, we have now created a winning atmosphere with Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, and other star rookies, we got Anthony Brown, six-round corner. Malik Collins had two sacks two weeks ago on the D-line. He was a third-round rookie. So everybody's stepping up. All these accidents happen, and here we are at 9-1. and one. I mean, how are you going to argue with, with things like that? You can't argue with that record. I mean, you could chalk it up every once in a while, but when it becomes 9-1, and one, the fact that anybody can say that Dallas isn't the best team in probably football right now is ridiculous. Whether you believe... They're going to finish with the Lombardi. That's a different question. But I think the accident that people are going to point to is not on the field, just like I prelude, uh, preclude to. The accident's going to happen when the owner just can't, he can't help it. It's in his blood. It's in Jerry Jones's blood to sit there. And if Dak has a bad game, if Dak has a bad half in an NFC championship game, do you see Tony Romo? You, you can't pull Tony Romo. I mean, you can't pull Dak Prescott for Tony Romo. Sorry. And the reason for that, like I said, is when you take a look at the game like Philadelphia where Dak struggled for three and a half quarters, he showed he has the poise to pull it off. He didn't play particularly well in the Baltimore game for the first half. You know, he was off. I see he throws off his back foot a lot when he's under pressure. A lot of high balls where I'm seeing the receivers having to leave the ground when it's a slow comeback route. Which, mm -hmm. again, it just shows you his, his accuracy and some of those short throws he still struggles with. But in the end, 
What does he do? I mean, he ends up always going four for five, five for five on the final drive and winning the game. So you cannot pull Tony Romo because Dak has proven that he yeah. has that quality in the clutch. I believe you can't, nor I, nor any normal, rational human being. This is Jerry Jones. This is the man who told a two-time Super Bowl winning champion, we don't need you anymore. Thank you for rebuilding this franchise. You can go now. And I just feel like, and, and it's not even that if, I mean, I think it was last week that Romo kind of made his press conference and, and said his speech and on, you know, I'll give him credit. That I don't think that was fake. I don't think that was phony. I, I don't understand people hating that. I think that that came for the heart. You know, people joke, but he, he's their cowboy. I mean, he has been a generational quarterback for them. You know, he pulled them through the tough times. Say what you will about him, but he was always there. Right. And he gave a really impassioned, a really passionate speech saying, you know, I, I, I'm going to secede my job to this young quarterback. And it, that would have been it. But then Jerry Jones has to say, like, well, he's still great, and why would I trade him? And it's like, you trade him after so that you just, A, you can clear up cap, but B, you kind of don't have these questions. And you know what, Dak's credit, he's done a great job handling it. But if he gets a sophomore slump, it, it just, it, it removes the bad habit. It's like always having a nicotine habit and having a pack. Just get rid of the pack. If you don't have the cigarettes there, you're not going to smoke them. If you don't have Tony Roma there, you're not going to have that itch. Because he, Jerry Jones wants winning through, val, validation through winning, excuse me. And he will sacrifice, I think, if in his heart he feels that Tony Romo is still better than Dak, can do more than Dak. And in his mind, he looks at it like, well, no, Dak's really, that's Steven's pick, but Romo's mine, you know? And, yeah, and but I, I still think that that comparison is a little unfair. To compare Tony Romo to a pack of cigarettes, he's not bad for you. He's still, in my opinion, and again, it's a big if when you say, or it's a big when when you say, when healthy, he's a top 10 quarterback in this league. I personally still to this day believe that Tony Romo right now is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. I don't think he would throw the balls high. I think he'd have four times the amount of touchdowns that Dak Prescott has right now. I think his, his interceptions would still be to a minimum. Maybe he'd have more than two, but what did he have in 2014? Seven or nine throughout a whole season? We're not talking about a big difference. And if I remember right, he threw like three of them in, in the first week of the season against the Niners. Yeah. So just judging him on the last 15 games, he probably only threw like five or six interceptions throughout the season. Because again, it's more about the formula. But I'm not here to you know, start up that argument of Romo should be starting over Dak because right now what you're seeing is magic. What you're seeing right now is camaraderie that you just cannot afford to break up. And I believe that for all of Jerry Jones's fault, he knows he doesn't have much longer. You know, he doesn't have much longer to win a Super Bowl. And he's going to take it any way that he can. With all that being said, I want to leave you all with this thought. As Mark Twain once famously said, to name the greatest of all inventors, accident.